So I'm going to call the meeting to order. This is the regular City Council meeting from Minnetrista, March 4th. We have first order of business. Uh, would you like to join me in Pledge of Allegiance? So welcome everyone, uh, also for those of you that are watching on YouTube later on. So first I'm going to start with some introductions and also a, a brief reminder that if you have cell phones or electronic devices, please put them on airplane mode or on silent so that they don't disrupt the proceedings here this evening. And uh, with that, um, I'm going to start introductions and this time I'm going to start on that end where Chief Falls is. So Chief Falls is um, on the end there. Next to him is our attorney, Ron Beatty with uh, Kennedy and Graven. And then we have David Abel, our community development director. Next to him this evening, we have Gary Peters, our public works superintendent. And then we have Brian Grimm, our financial um, director. Uh, Mike Baroni, our administrator is um, absent this evening. He is on vacation. And then um, I'm Lisa Whalen. I'm the mayor next to me, our council members, Pam Moore. Martinson, Mike Molitor, John Chamberlain, Shannon Bruce, and then we have on the end, we have our city engineer with WSB, um, Allison Fowski, and then our city clerk, we have Chris Linquist, and then director of administration, Cassandra Tabor. So again, welcome. Next, we have approval of our agenda, and I just want to make one change. Under special presentations, we have Senator Dave Osmick. He will not be able to join us this evening. I believe he has a committee meeting that he had to be at. But instead, what I'm going to ask is that Gary Peters give us an update on the uh, water line um, broken water line, cracked water line for, um, that's been going on today. So with that, um, I have no other changes. Are there any other additions or changes? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve at that one change? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, motion has been made by Ms. Mortensen and seconded by Ms. Bruce. Any further questions? Hearing none, all those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes 5-0. So Mr. Peters. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor Council. As you guys are probably aware, um, we have a water main break in town. Um, 4100 block of Kings Point Road. Early this morning, we had a 20 inch water main uh, sustain a, a, a sizable crack. Um, we, it ended up draining down uh, most of our tower. Our wells were kicked in. We could not keep up with it. Uh, we did lose a lot of water pressure on the south and central areas of town. Uh, it took several hours to find this uh, leak. We drove everywhere. Um, we ended up finding it here um, as the pipe went over a culvert in a creek area. It was actually about uh, 10 feet under the road surface at the um, base where the culvert actually is. It was actually shooting out into there into the actual drainage way. Um, so it took a while to find it. Um, we did get everything shut down. We had a number of frozen water valves, of course, because it's winter. Um, we ended up having to uh, bring our steamer out, to steam open the valves just to get them to shut off. We did reroute water finally. Uh, late this afternoon, we did get everything kind of isolated in that area on Kings Point from Big Woods Drive to Maple Leaf is still shut down. Um, but we did reroute water through Woodland Cove and we did fire up uh, well number five again to cover North and South Saunders, the Pinnacle area and that stuff. Um, we are under a boil issue because our pressure did hit zero in some of the areas, not all the areas. I mean, we did have some water pressure remaining in most of the town, but since a couple of the areas, I know North Saunders one and Pinnacle, um, since they did lose all their water pressure, we do have to issue a boil order uh, just for protection. Um, we have everything back uh, flowing. We've taken and uh, went and uh, flushed all our hydrants. Uh, we've taken our samples. We have sent them off to angle water testing for back tea testing to find out and make sure there is no E. coli in there. Our tests show that we do have uh, a lot of chlorine residual in there, which is good. Um, that's what kills the bacteria in there. So hopefully everything comes back, but it is a 24 hour test. So it'll be under the boil order at least until tomorrow at this time and probably won't be able to lift it until Wednesday morning. Um, the water is, you know, is safe to use for washing dishes in a dishwasher, bathing and that type of stuff. We just don't recommend drinking it. So, um, there was, we did get, uh, several cases of water, several pallets for the citizens to pick up here. So, um, we ended up did finding the, uh, a large crack in this 20 inch water main. 
Um, we've abandoned it for the night just because it is such a uh, mess. Um, it's right in the middle of the road. There's uh, four to six feet of frost that we're trying to dig through to get to it. Um, we've got 20 feet of road open and all 20 feet of pipe that's exposed has a longitudinal crack through it. This is a 20, 21 inch PVC water main. Uh, that pipe wall is one inch thick. The only thing we can conceive of it is laid right over a um, uh, culvert, uh, tin culvert pipe, steel culvert pipe. The only thing we can decipher, and we don't know this for a fact, but we think that cold air transferred through that culvert up into that pipe and froze it somehow. I mean, that's the only thing we can come up with. We have no other explanation why this is, but um, due to the lateness, the dark, um, and, and just the time permitting, We've uh, pulled the crews off. We blocked off that road. Water has been all rerouted and stuff, so everybody does have water back. I mean, water isn't serviced throughout their fire protections back up. Just that section of water is closed, or uh, that section of road and water is shut down. But we'll be back out tomorrow morning because we're going to have to rip about uh, 40 more feet of road open to get enough room for us to open a trench up, find out where exactly that pipe stops cracking. Because once this starts, we have to find it. And once you find the end of the crack, you have to go about two to three, almost four feet beyond that, so you don't carry it off. Uh, splice in new pipe and, uh, you know, get everything buttoned up, fire it up, make sure we have uh, everything sealed up, and then, uh, you know, start backfilling. So it's going to be quite the process yet tomorrow. So and even once all this gets done, that is a brand-new road section that we put in. We're only going to backfill it to what we can do, but then we will plan on somehow getting another contract out there next summer, whether we – do it with the road projects that were coming up, but we will have to get that section of road back to our city spec. So right now, everything, you know, we, we have water everywhere. Um, everybody is in service. Um, like I say, the boil protection hopefully will be lifted Wednesday morning, but uh, as for right now, we, you know, we solved the issue. I mean, it unfortunately just took that long to find the pipe, the, the crack, and that's what's the, you know, the fan, faster you can find it, the better you off you are. But in this case, it actually helped us because it did alleviate some frost there. But like I say, we got four to six feet of frost to dig through tomorrow for about 40 feet, and it's going to take a while. Okay. And the boil order is just a precautionary, um, all, as actually mandated by the health department? Correct. Um, we notified them right away um, since we do lose uh, pressure. Um, what that does is, it happens in a lot of older cities, a lot of older piping, but you can pick up E. coli bacteria that from the particles laid in the pipe. Pipes aren't always perfectly clean. Ours, being as brand new in the area, uh, we're pretty confident. We do have a lot of chlorine residual that popped up right away when we fired the system back up. And we are, you know, we always inject chlorine and stuff and fluoride with it to help kill that bacteria. That's the main purpose of it. Um, but yes, we have to issue that boil order. We have to get it uh, offsite tested. Okay. So it's a 24 hour bacteria test. Um, we've been working with uh, Carla Peterson and uh, Brian Noma at the Department of Health. We've been fielding questions here. They've been fielding questions down there for us and you know, just to make sure everything's you know, clear cut for citizens sure. and stuff. So we've had some big concerns. We've helped you know, try to alleviate some of the issues with people that they've had you know, and stuff. And, kind of calm their fears and stuff it's okay. it's it's a weekly occurrence at least this time of year i mean all through the winter i mean this happens all over just today alone in there was in in our area there was uh at least that we know of uh including our seven different water main breaks i know so mound had several mound mm -hmm. had mound is working on their third one in two days wow. um winstead had one new germany had one waconia had one Nor uh norwood young america so i mean wow. we're it happens. I mean, yeah. it just we just happen, unfortunately, hit a, a major line that, uh, you know, causes boil order. So mm -hmm. not everybody has to have it, but, I mean, it's, it's like Carla said, you know, it's almost a weekly, a bi-weekly, weekly occurrence, several of them a week sometimes. Yeah. You know, it's just nature well, of the beast. Well, let's hope this is the only one. <laughs> I hope so. This was a bad one. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Gary. Any questions? So do we have our crews on there or do we have our We have our crew and we have uh, Pride Excavating helping out. They've got the, the trench box and that type stuff. So, But we do have our, we are loading our big hole up to help them rip frost tomorrow. It's such a long process. That's that's what takes forever. See, once you're down there and you can dig by the pipe, it's pretty easy. But it's getting through that four to six feet that just takes hours. I mean, you're jackhammering. You know, you're, you're, you're pulling it up what you can. I mean, you take out big chunks. And then we're also working a against a uh, 
in this road too when king's point was reconstructed we have a brand new force main we have an, ex an existing abandoned in place force main we have our new water main we have an abandoned gas main right there and we have fiber optic that we're all kind of working around so it's a very tight corridor to work in if gas the new gas line thank goodness is way away but it's a tight corridor to work in so you really have to be careful what you're doing around there so you don't rupture anything else yeah. so so is, you're thinking you're mentioning the possibility that the culvert may have caused it because it was too close correct for not immediate but for a longer term solution when the summer when we rebuild any possibility of relocating either no what we're going to do is we will be insulating over it we uh, went down and actually picked up a bunch of uh, sheet insulation so what we're doing is once we get that exposed we'll be putting that insulation you know uh, several layers if we can as many as we can over that culvert between that and the pipe and then we will put it over the pipe too and you know for that span in there just to try to give it a little bit of of you know insulation cushion in there you know once we embed that all in the sand and stuff hopefully we you know you know hopefully it never happens again you know knock on wood but you never know i mean it's just luck of the draw that it is that but like i say you know thank goodness it was in a spot where we can isolate it and, and get it around so okay okay thank you for that update gary um so next um under special presentations we have a fourth quarter year-end financial update mr grimm Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. And I, I do want to, um, I guess, echo or maybe even just state that I think uh, Gary did a great job today of being, yeah. you know, very proactive and worked with Cassandra, other staff, you know, the, obviously that all fielded calls, and Angie, right. Don, and Isha, and they did a, yep, a great thank job you. Of, <laughs> yep. of trying to get out the information out to the residents, and I want to thank them for that. So uh, as far as the fourth quarter financial update, so that's in your packet starting on a, Page three, and I think uh, I know, uh, from my perspective, it's it's good news. I think we had talked late in uh, December or even November, December, that we knew the building permit revenue was coming in better than we thought, and I think that just kept coming in during December. So, as you or, uh, or um, even uh, better than what we thought. So, uh, if you look at the uh, the memo on page three, I guess just hitting the, the highlights. So our general fund revenues ended up coming in about. $240,000 better than budgeted, you know, about 105% or 5% better. Um, almost all of that, about 225,000 was the, uh, the building permit revenue, um, which came in closer to, it's like 880 some thousand versus we had, you know, we, we had been seeing 650 to 700,000 the last three to five years. And that just really, uh, we had some big, big valuation, big dollar permits, et cetera, that really pushed that number up. Um, as far as expenditures, we basically came in at a little less than 99% of our, our, our budget. So we know about uh, 70,000 less in total than what we had uh, budgeted in almost a $5 million budget, you know, 4.9, you know, up there, you know. So, um, and I referenced there, you know, most departments came in at or slightly less than budgeted expenditures. So ultimately, um, instead of, we had budgeted to spend down roughly $360,000 um, with those results, we're basically at about $52,000 spend down. So, uh, you know, almost, uh, you, know, you know, right around, uh, you know, $300,000 better than what we uh, projected, about 225000 on the revenue, or two forty, and then um, 70000 on the expenditure side. So, um, and then I guess a uh, question you might have is, well, how does that affect our, our overall general fund fund balance? And I think we are budgeted to spend down to about 50% at the end of this year, 49.50, and I think we're now gonna be more in the mid 50s as far as when you look at a fund balance of about 2.8 million versus 5 million of budgeted expenditures. So just to give you, I guess, a, a, a context of where that puts us uh, financially, going for, looking forward to future budget years in this current year, et cetera. So um, I think uh, everyone saw probably in the packet as far as uh, did include a, a summary page with each of the revenue and expenditures, sort of breaking it down by some of those major categories, property taxes, you know, permits, you know, intergovernmental on the revenue side, and then um, on the expenditure side, you know, some of that in general government, uh, public works, public safety, um, et cetera there. So um, I don't know if anyone has any questions on more the the details of, of the report but i think you know overall good news uh the auditors actually will be looking at the numbers they're doing their audit field work this week so i don't envision anything really changing there could be some s slight adjustments if they see something that should be um, changed from mm -hmm. between funds or something or whatever or 
but everything should be booked as far as all our receivables, payables on the full accrual, or you know, I guess on the accrual uh, basis of accounting. So uh, okay. I think I'll just open it up to, to yeah. council. Any questions? Always good news that we um, didn't uh, dip into our reserve as much as we thought. Again, we're kind of watching that reserve fund balance. Want to make sure that we're somewhere in that 45 to 50 percent range. So, so that's good news. Um, okay. I had a, a, I talked a little bit to Mr. Grimm about um, the different funds that, that we have on page 12, and uh, Mr. Abel was kind enough to send me the the rules around the tree replacement fund and how that fund is to be used and what it can be spent on. And I was just noticing, and, and there's a lot of money in the tree replacement fund, that's $360,000, that we might want to consider having a work session to it's look at that fund. We, I, actually, I have that on my council reports to talk about. So, okay, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the the other fund that I I was talking to Mr. Grimm about was the cable fund. There's two hundred eight thousand yeah. dollars there. Um, so there's there's some money sitting in here that I can't imagine that we're going to spend three hundred sixty thousand no. dollars on trees. No, um, that we ought to look at figuring out how to use that money beneficially for the city. Right. No, those, and yeah, and I, I have that on my notes to under council report, so we're on the same page there. Excellent. So, okay. All right. Yeah. Any other Any questions? Other? Yeah, pretty much page 12 there is, is the uh, cash investment total on each of the respective funds that is included mm -hmm. each, each time with the quarterly reports. Yeah. But good, good, uh, good points, good yeah. questions. Okay. All right. So any other questions? Otherwise, um, we'll move on to our consent. Uh, we don't have anybody signed up under persons to be heard, so we'll move on to our consent agenda items consisting of A through H. Approve our work session meeting minutes from February 19th, 2019. B is approve our regular meeting minutes from February 19th, 2019. Approve our closed session meeting minutes from February 19th, 2019. And also a resolution to approve claims. E is approve a resolution to, for a setback variance at 1105 County Road 19. F is a resolution to approve the 2019 2020 lease for Gale Farm property, and G is accept the resignation of building official Jesse Sikowski, okay. And also H is to accept the resignation of maintenance worker Aaron Rassett. Both of them have accepted positions elsewhere and moving on to bigger opportunities. Motion to um, approve consent agenda items A through H. So moved. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Motion has been made by Ms. Mortensen and seconded by Mr. Chamberlain to approve consent agenda items A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. Any further questions? Hearing none, all those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes 5-0. You're good to go. Okay. Um, next, we don't have any public hearings, so our business item is a discussion action on excess excess funds in the 2018 St. Bonnie uh, fire budget per the 2018 fire department reconciliation letter. You saw that in your packet, Mr. Yep. Grimm? Yeah, I know, uh, Madam Mayor and Council. So yeah, this is at the uh, very end of the packet, uh, pages 58 and 59. Uh, the letter that we received from uh, the City of St. Bonifacius is on page 59 it shows that they had a slight uh, I guess sort of we were talking about a, a positive variance they had that for the uh, fire uh, budget for uh, for 2018 when they reconciled everything so per the uh, the contract if it, uh, the uh, reserve fund gets above 10% they they turn in they make a decision obviously themselves as a city as well as put it out to us in Lake Town and Watertown townships that we can either have our um, amount of that excess credited against our um, 2019 amount or it can go into the you know reserve fund to be you know go be a little over that 10 percent to be used for um for future purchases so um the uh amount shown on the attached sheet in their packet was two thousand ninety six dollars which the city of Minatristas share that uh was about one what was one thousand four fifteen so 
Um, and I referenced that you know we had this in 2017, and at that time we did make a motion to uh, allow that money to go back into the uh, reserve fund. Uh, one thing I, I think I uh, talked about with the council members this morning is that I did get late in the day or on Friday after the packet was out that uh, the fire chief for St. Bonnie, uh, Mr. Weber, does plan on uh, bringing forward during 2019 to potentially purchase, at least make the recommendation to purchase some air packs mm -hmm. during 2019, which would be about 66,000. So you'd, or that was his estimate. So that would probably obviously go back down below that 10% uh, reserve. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, if just as another piece of information that uh, that wasn't uh, uh, received in time for the packet. So I guess I'd you know, open it up for council as far as what they'd like to see do with that. It's not a lot of, a lot of money or, or a huge amount of money, but it, it's still something to, um, you know, decide, decide per the contract as far as um, if we want to direct um, St. This, you know, St. Bonifacius fired, you know, whether we put that in the reserve or want to credit. Um, the the uh, council at the uh, city of St. Bonifacius uh, at their last meeting is putting, I guess, their share into the reserve. Or whatever. Just keeping it there. That, that, yeah. what okay. Versus bringing it, like, to their general fund. Or anything, okay. So. Okay. And I'm, I'm, I, it's $1,400 and it's hardly worth even yeah, really. quibbling about. I would just put it back in the reserve yeah. fund. I agree. Um, I, we've done that in the past. Whether we pay for it now or pay for it later, we're going to be yeah. paying for the, those packs. And they're needed, too. So if it helps out our fire department, so that's a good thing. So. I agree. Agree. Do you want a motion then? Yeah, it would just be okay. a motion just to that effect, and then I'll, I'll pass that on to um, Ms. Fisk at um, the City of St. Okay, so um, I'm looking for a motion to agree to um, leave the $1,415 in the general reserve or in the reserve fund balance for St. Bonnie Fire Department. So moved. Okay, is there a second? I'll second that. Okay, any further questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed? <coughs> Motion passes. 5-0. So that concludes our business items. We will move on to administrative items. Uh, staff reports. Uh, Ms. Tabor. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Members of the Council, I just wanted to provide an update in uh, light of the two resignations that were accepted this evening. Um, as you recall, we posted for a building official position uh, David and I spoke about it. We did receive a candidate, but we're looking obviously to assess more than one candidate, hopefully. So we did extend that through this week. We'll see how that goes, and then we'll assess from there. Um, we did post for a maintenance worker immediately as well. That is open through the 12th. Um, in the meantime, with our building official, David is working with Jack Mullen, who was uh, acted as our interim in the past and has filled in on a seasonal basis as well. So he'll be the um, acting BO for the city on a part-time basis, and we're working on a schedule with him for that just to make sure that we're able to continue to serve at a level that we've been known to serve at previously. So just an update is where we're at with that, and I'll just continue to bring those updates as we look for staffing. Staffing in this season of the year can be challenging in general, um, especially for public works and building official positions. So we'll just look to see how that timeline goes. Well, it's really good that Mr. Mullen can step in. We're very fortunate to have that, op that option. Absolutely, and yep. he's very good at what he does. Yep. Um, and the, the builders and our residents are very familiar with him, so just bringing in that familiarity, I think is just really good in transition too. Yep, good, so, thank you. Thank you. The only other item, I don't know, do we wanna remind, and maybe this is even for myself as far as the uh, timeline for Mr. Baroni's uh, uh, feedback for his uh, review, is that, was that due this week? Yeah. Does that sound right? I'm trying to remember <laughs> the exact date off the top six. of my head. Oh, six. The six, okay. Okay. thank yeah. you. Okay. Yes, let's do the six. Um, I do understand that so far, uh, most people have been able to use that document sometimes depending on what I save it in and what I provide it to you in and what your system you're running you may have issues with it being read only let me know I'll see what I can do to send a different version save it a different way um, you can also absolutely print it out do it by hand scan it to me drop it off it really doesn't matter I'm the one who co compiles all of it I'm happy to do to read handwritten as well so thank you yes for that reminder but if you run into issues I'm I'm available all week just let me know what you need okay. thank you are there any other staff reports? Okay, so we'll move on to um, council reports. So 
I'll start, um, as I said, so I have a couple notes here. Um, it won't take very long. So I did attend the Planning Commission meeting. It was the first meeting for this year, and um, I did um, swear in the, there are three new um, commissioners, actually one, one commissioner um, returning, if you will, and then two new alternates. And one of the alternates was actually able to step in right away. Gary Vars was, um, took Gary Pettis's place for the evening. So um, very short meeting, just one item on the agenda, but nice to get together and uh, kind of see everybody and, and swear in the new commissioners. And then I also attended the personnel committee meeting as um, Ms. Tabor just did an update for. The other thing I did want to mention is, um, uh, so a couple of the communities, and we can talk about this maybe at a, a near work session, I'm not sure if we can get it on the next one or not, but that would be great, um, tree sales. So a lot of the communities are doing tree sales, and Hennepin County offered grants, um, which I wasn't aware of, but um, to communities. And what they're doing is they're doing these tree sales in light of the fact that we're anticipating the ash borers coming. And so, um, and I have been asked by a number of individuals in our community if we're going to be doing a tree sale again. And I said, you know, so far, I wasn't aware of it, but um, that I would bring this up. And so your comments earlier are right in line with that. 360000 is in our tree um, or in our environmental fund, which definitely could be used for, for this um, planting of trees. And we can talk about where they would be planted and who would qualify and all of that. But I think we should, just having it sit there doesn't do us a lot of good. And I do know we had like $5,000 in our budget for trees this year. I had recommended a little bit higher, but we can change that budget item if need be because we do have plenty of money there. So anyhow, that might be one thing we could talk about at our next work session if possible. Anything else? Okay. The staff is? Yes. Oh, I, I, I should mention one thing. I'm <laughs> sorry. Okay, so again, just a reminder, um, Night with the Community uh, put on or hosted by the West Tonka Community and Commerce Group. Um, that is March 13th from 6 to 8 at the uh, theater at the new Performing Arts Center at uh, West Tonka. So I will be there along with um, Mayor from Mound and Mayor from Orono and, and Mr. Borg, the superintendent from West Tonka. So. Great. That was on my list, too. Okay. So I won't go into that. Um, as far as the tree sale goes, I also had a lot of requests <coughs> while I was out door knocking. So, and I talked about that at the strategic planning meeting, so I'm all looking into okay. that. Uh, WCC meeting, the normal every monthly one, is on the 14th. I will be attending. Uh, the pig races are coming along. We are collecting the money. Uh, prices are starting to come in. And we got the contract signed by the owner of the pig races, which I handed in to Cassandra. Uh, and I also attended the personnel meeting on the 26th. So that's it. Yep. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, LMCD. Um, LMCD is moving forward with uh, looking at an RFP to study AIS within the lake. And part of that will be a vegetation management plan uh, that is due, uh, proposed to be due by the end of June which means that the LMCD will not be running uh, its own harvesting program this year. Uh, they have the option of potentially hiring private contractors for some of the work. Uh, that decision probably would be made after the plan that comes back at the end of June. Um, so that's the current state of where that um, program is at. Um, there was also a request to modify code to allow f a fuel boat operation that's been ongoing for a long time, the applicant has decided to withdraw that. So uh, we've taken that off origin at this point. Um, but those are the updates from me. Okay. okay. Uh, attended the Pioneer Sarah Creek meeting on the 21st. A couple of things out of that. One, our Hennepin County advisor, uh, and I always have trouble with his name, Jim, Kujala. Kujala, yeah. It's close. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, is retiring at the end oh, of December. Okay. Uh, so in the next couple of months, we'll meet someone as being assigned. The, that's a minor point. The big point is his title has always been an advisor, but he's been a more hands on individual. And thusly, some of the costs that we might have incurred of uh, dealing with some outside engineering firm 
kind of did through Hennepin <coughs> County and at a reduced different cost. So long story short, the odds are we're going to have to be dealing with uh, some engineering firms on some of these projects and so the budget costs are probably going to go up and, and we'll probably see a related part. Or we'll have a big discussion on it at our meeting a couple weeks from now. And our budget starts, our budget preliminary starts in April. So, right, right. so we'll have some numbers coming down the pike on that. Uh, the other item is uh, the election of officers, <coughs> chair, vice chair, and secretary uh, were just continued on by those people that already had them. We were looking for a treasurer, as Mr. Cook is no longer on the commission, and I am now the treasurer. So. <laughs> were, were you absent? Funny, funny how that happened. Were you absent? It just kind of fell right in there. So uh, that, that was basically the items. Okay. Thanks. Um, I don't have any meetings to report on, but just, just two cents on the, the tree fund. And I'm not sure if anybody else um, has comments about it, but my feeling about using city resources, city dollars to underwrite private purchases of trees, that's not something the city should be using tax dollars for. I think people are perfectly able to buy their own trees sure. and I, I don't think we should be using tax dollars to do that. So that's just my two cents yeah. and I don't have anything else to and, and just for the record, these aren't tax dollars that were collected from <coughs> our residents. This, these are funds that developers had to pay because of the tree removal. I understand so, that, yeah. but, but it's city money. Yeah. So, so, and it is um, a not 100% paid by the city. The resident does have to pay a portion if, of it. Tree sales usually you do. Yeah. There is some cost to the city, but um, again, we can, we can talk, we can talk about, about that at a future date. So, all right. With that, uh, we have no more items on our agenda, so a motion to adjourn is in order. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, motion has been made by Ms. Bruce and seconded by Mr. Mahler to adjourn. All those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes 5-0. Thank you very much. Drive safe, slow and safe. Jeez.